Welcome to the Shipper Update. I'm Anthony Smith, Chief Economist here at Freight Waves, and it's Friday, so we're doing a bit of a week in review and also talking about some of the current leases that just got updated this morning. Starting off with the weekly initial jobs claims just got updated yesterday, showing a second to lowest reading of all time at 166,000 uh, applicants for un unemployment benefits and over this last reporting week, but this is just kind of a, a bit strange. So when I first saw this number, one of my first thoughts was, is this a typo? What's going on here? 166,000? That seems a little bit low, a little bit suspicious, but there were some seasonal revisions being done here um, that have been done by the reporting um, force. So we're looking at this number. Typically what we would historically want to see or expect to see is somewhere around 200,000 on the low, low side, up to 250,000 and being that midpoint. Anything over 250,000 really starting to get a little bit hairy, 280, 300,000, not where we really want to be. So looking at um, 166,000 where it's just the lowest level that we've seen in 54 years is something to kind of take note of. So. Moving forward here, um, there, there will be a seasonal adjustment that will show a little bit lower and all the historical uh, numbers have been kind of revised as well, showing much significantly or significantly lower uh, reporting numbers. There will be a, an adjustment to these numbers once again, kind of going back to the pre-pandemic way of reporting these numbers. So there's gonna be a little bit of shakiness when looking at these, but we'll be sure to keep you posted on all the latest movements as it pertains to the initial jobs claims. As we look at the employment or the the jobs market that is one of the last strongholds or really the, the last stronghold for consumers right now. We're looking at the overall number of job openings. That's where these consumers can trade up to a higher paying role, wage growth can increase, and really that's one of those propping up factors that's really increasing or kind of keeping up any type of consumer confidence and sentiment right now. Going into our next chart here, we can dive into this up this trend that's a lot more concerning, and that's going to be credit card spending. We're looking at ongoing credit card utilization. You can really kind of categorize it into two areas, non-revolving credit and revolving credit. When we're looking at the total number, we did see an increase here. So I have the total credit card spending outstanding here in the blue line and the orange line here. This is a regression line back to 2018. We can see that we've been moderating well above that trend over the last few months here. We're seeing that there was a pretty significant upward movement in the last um, in the latest number um, showing that credit card spending is definitely increasing over the last uh, month here throughout the reporting month of February. One of the interesting things that just came out that we're going to have to dive into this number was the revolving credit. So when we go into our next chart here, we can see revolving credit being outlined here in this blue line. And we can see that we are now above the pre-pandemic level. That's one of those areas that we wanted to get to as slowly as possible, but that's increasing at a pretty rapid clip here. So we're seeing this upward movement and credit card utilization showing that consumers are gonna be a little bit more strapped for their ability to spend. We're looking at this consumer's ability to spend. It's gonna be even more pertinent, as you know, from those uh, consumer stimulus packages that were deployed and throughout the pandemic, no longer the case right now. Those extended or bonus jobless benefits no longer in place. But one of the saving graces is for a lot of individuals on that non-revolving credit side is that those um, student loan repayment has been pushed back once again um, by the U.S. So we're when we're looking at the total revolving credit outstanding, this is going to be one of those areas that really kind of hampers some ability to spend. We saw this likely going to be, uh, we're seeing or expecting this to likely increase again in March, especially as we saw what happened with a lot of those um, gas prices and ongoing inflationary pressures as well. And a lot of uh, increasing uh, uh, inflationary pressures are really across the board here. As we go into our next chart here, this is all important because it comes back to consumer um, ability to spend or consumer spending on durable goods and as it relates to freight and transportation. So we have here in the blue line personal consumption expenditures for durable goods, which is a fancy way of saying consumer spending for durable goods. And so before the pand uh, during the pandemic, really there was so much so much funds out for those consumers. They were buying all the durable goods that they can. They were quarantined. They were at home. They're looking at home projects. They're looking at uh, improving their home setup, things like that. They were making these purchases ad nauseum. We're looking at uh, e-commerce really booming, all really all over the place. There was just spending on top of spending. Now that spending is shifting, and consumers are going to have to be a little bit more. 
I would say, direct with where their funds are going. They're going to have to make that choice on, hey, am I going to buy more stuff or am I going to go into experiences and services? Right now, it definitely seems like that shift to services is in full effect. As that more service spending goes on, we're going to see fewer goods on, uh, on durable goods uh, being purchased, and that is going to have uh, an effect on these volumes that we're also going to be seeing decline as well. That's going to take away from a lot of those volumes. And so we're going to see continued downward movement there as consumers continue to buy more and more of those services or have fewer funds to dedicate to those services or to those durable goods as well. So that's going to be a trend to watch and how it's going to impact a lot of shippers out there because those consumers are going to be battling with not do I get both, but which one am I going to go with uh, overall? So those are going to be some of those conflicting uh, value points that consumers are going to be really facing for for a lot of those shippers out there. So that's going to do it for this first shipper update. We'll be sure to keep you posted on all the latest for these consumer spending trends. Right now, we're going to take a quick break, but we'll be right back with more Freight Waves Now.